beyond repair or they feel like their lives are unsalvageable, that you can't put anything back together. And I'm here to tell you that regardless of the pieces, you can put it back together. Um, And as you do that deconstruction process, you learn about your self-limiting beliefs and perceptions. You learn about the ideologies that are inconsistent with who you are. You learn about the philosophies that undermine your power and potential. You learn about the narratives that you have scripted that are negative and toxic to your true identity. You learn about your power. You learn about uh, the prophetic relevance and significance of your life. I mean, I could go on and on and on. There's so much that we learn in that process, but so many people are so afraid. And what I want to do is I want to kind of demystify Uh, this deconstruction process and let us know and understand that until we deconstruct, the greatest development, the greatest depth, the greatest discoveries of our lives cannot truly take place. And so I'm here as a guide. I'm here as a prophetic mentor and teacher to help you to go to those places in yourself that you've been afraid to go to. Now, this is totally shifting off of my notes, but you know me, I'm going to flow with it. There are places within ourselves that so many of us are afraid to go to, and I would encourage you to get my book, two books. One of them is Soul Journey. Um, You need to read that book. It's going to help you to heal and to shift your life in so many ways. And then you need to get my other book, Significance. Reclaiming Your Personal Power in a World that Discounts Your Difference. It's a book about identity. It took me several years to write that book. I started writing it. And, you know, this is wonderful because the thing I love about podcasts and interviews and settings like this is that I get to tell you the stories that you don't know. And honestly, in my life, there were so many moments Um, where I had to do that deep inner work to really understand who I was because you cannot show up powerfully in the world and you cannot show up as the greatest expression of who you were created to be if you don't know who you are. And so I feel like there was a, 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 a season in my life where I just did not know who I was. And so Um, I had started to write the book, and I put the book aside, and I wrote more books. And then one day I said, I need to get back to this book because I was speaking and giving keynotes and talking about identity. And if you know me, you know I like to give people tools and resources to help them with their lives. That's why I write. Um, You know, I always tell my closest friends and family I could just, um, sell MP3s of my keynotes and presentations, and you have to sift through it and find the key insights that you need. But I say I write because I want to create something that people can get in their hands and it can help them to do the work to bring transformation to their lives. And so I started writing Identity, and about a chapter into that book, All I could do was just sit there with my mouth open because I started to read it back. What people don't understand when you're a writer and you've written as many books as I've written, I've written 12 books, another book is in the works. Um, I don't know how many articles I've written, probably hundreds over the years. Um, When you read the words back to yourself sometimes, it hits you in a way that it's hard to articulate. And so I started to read it back, and my mouth was just open. And um, I began to immediately realize that this is something that's going to really help a lot of people because so many people in the world, it doesn't matter, um, the rich, the middle class, everybody. That I've met so many people, and it, it never fails. So many people are struggling with an identity crisis. They don't know who they are. And so what happens is we um, we begin to, what's the word I'm looking, merge into every environment we enter. We don't manifest our true greatness. We haven't found our authentic voice. We don't know how to become the atmosphere shifters and the climate changers that God created us to be. So we blend in and nobody blends out. 
And I feel like, you know, a lot of people say a lot of kind words, and I'm always grateful, but I really feel like the bravest thing I ever did in my life was just to blend out. You know, when you don't fit anywhere, anyway, and you don't, nobody under, seems to understand who you are, the best thing you can do is just be yourself. And so I've just been myself, and my, my brand has really been about authenticity, and it has resonated with people in a way that a few people can, and people know that about me. They understand that. They know I speak in a language of liberation and empowerment that nobody else on this planet speaks. Uh, people tell me all the time, they said, you know, you can say things in a way that no other human being can say it. They said, we've been... We, we've we heard a lot of people. We've been in a lot of presentations. We've heard a lot of speakers, but nobody can communicate these truths in the way that you do. And it's just me being me. And so I wanted to write a book that would give people the courage, because you don't need permission. The fact that you are alive and breathing and a unique design created by God is all the permission you need. You don't need permission. You need the courage to be who you were born to be. And so that book, Identity, is one of the most important books I've ever written. I still hear it to this day. I wrote that book several years ago, and it still resonates with people. I was just told recently that an entire group is going through um, that book, Significance, and that just makes me so proud um, as an author to know that people are not just reading it, but they are really learning. And what you know, every book I write, there are exercises that come with the chapters. And so what better way than to have a group that's reading this book together and they're having powerful aha moments and awakenings in their lives through this book. And so what I'm trying to communicate and convey to you today is that you got to know who you are and you got to own that and stand in the power of who you have been created to be. You cannot go after the life that you were born for until you first let go of what is behind you. So many of us are trying to move forward with our lives when we have not first let go of the past. You know, I always tell people that in order to move forward, there are certain things that you got to be willing to let go. And I always tell people this, allow your past to teach you, but never allow your past to torment you. Our past is there. It's there to be a teacher. It's there to be a reference. It's there to be a tool. It's there to be an educator. But so many people are tormented and harassed and imprisoned by the past, and it robs them of the ability to move forward with their lives. And I always tell people you cannot live in the trenches of yesterday when the possibilities of tomorrow are calling out to you. You got to embrace your future and you got to be willing to let go of what you've always known to embrace the life that is waiting and destined for you. And so as long as you are a prisoner to your past, you can change from manifesting in your life. And so a lot of people are like, Jamel, I don't understand why my life is not changing while I'm not experiencing the breakthroughs and the shifts and the pivots and the turns and the transitions that I want to experience in my life. And what they don't realize is that they are prisoners to their past, and you have got to be willing to let go of your past in order to embrace your future. You've got to be willing to say goodbye to your past and hello to the possibilities of what your life can become. You cannot move forward with your life living in the rearview mirror. You know, when you get in the car, the rearview mirror is there, and it's there for your protection, your safety, for you to be able to have a good view of what's around you um, as you're on the road and you're driving. And life is the same way. Um, we have rearview mirrors that are there um, to show us uh, blind spots and things that could threaten our journey, but we were never designed to live our lives in the rearview mirror, and so many of us have become victims of our past. I know I, I talk about being a prisoner, but so many people are victims of their past because the whole narrative that I hear coming out of their mouth is about the past. Every time you try to get them to see what's possible for their lives, they go to their past. Every time opportunity is calling them higher, they go to their past. Every time they hit discomfort or a roadblock or a setback in their lives, they revert back to what's familiar and go back to the past. 
And so what I'm trying to do is get you 